everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Welcome back. How's it going? In today's episode, we're going to be diving into the correct pronunciation of U.S. state capitals. Sometimes U.S. capital cities are the most populous cities. In other words, the city with the most people in the state. Sometimes they're not. Whether you plan on traveling to the United States or you just want to improve your speaking skills, This episode will help you confidently pronounce the names of these places. They commonly come up in everyday conversations. If you're talking to people from the United States, you see them often on the news. I'll guide you through each of them. You'll also hear one interesting fact about each place, just to make it fun. In episode 64, which was also a pronunciation episode about the U.S. states. We went through all of the state names and shared a fun fact about the states. So that episode is pretty similar. Now we're focusing on the state capitals. As with every episode you hear on this podcast, there is an objective. To me, each episode is like a lesson. And in this one, as you can tell from the title, I highly recommend working on your pronunciation. And what I love about podcasts is that you can do this while you're out driving, if you're taking a walk in the park or cleaning house. It's not a hands-on activity that requires you to be sitting at a desk. However, you need to be attentive. You should be listening closely. And I recommend shadowing me. Are you familiar with the shadowing technique? Like the name, you will be my shadow. Right after I say something, you should repeat what I say, mimicking my rhythm, intonation, and really importantly, the way I link words. Pronunciation training involves cheek muscles, tongue placement, and movement of your lips and mouth in general. So while just listening helps train your ears You need to be actually moving your mouth, speaking out loud to train it. Now, just to be clear, I don't think it's necessary to sound like a native speaker. That is 100% your choice. But I think that as a language learner, we all want to be understood. Otherwise, what's the point of all the effort? So why not try shadowing? If you're not interested in working on pronunciation, You can also use my example sentences as dictation exercises. Just grab a notebook and try to write each sentence after I say it. There's one last thing. As you know, transcripts are included in premium content, but in every season, there are a few episodes with a free, visible transcript. This is one of them. If you would like to read along and learn more about the places I've mentioned in this episode, be sure to check out the episode webpage at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. If you would like the full downloadable PDF transcript, quiz, and more options to improve your English, be sure to sign up to premium content. Just follow the links in the episode notes. Without further ado, let's begin. Number one, repeat after me. Montgomery, Alabama. Rosa Parks bus boycott began in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery. Repeat after me. Juneau, Alaska. Did you know that Juneau is accessible only by boat or plane? Juneau. Sounds like did you know. Juneau. Juneau. Did you know? Did you know? Juneau. Anyway. Number three. Repeat after me. Phoenix, 
Arizona. Phoenix is the hottest capital city in the U.S. Phoenix, Arizona. Repeat after me. Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock is home to the only diamond mine in the U.S. Little Rock. It's also where Bill Clinton, the 42nd U.S. president, was born. Two fun facts there. So next we have Sacramento, California. Repeat after me. Sacramento became a boom town during the California gold rush. Sacramento, California. I grew up near Sacramento. Old Sac still looks like the Old West. It's also the western terminal point of the first transcontinental railroad. And you can actually see a lot of trains there in their train museum. Repeat after me. Denver, Colorado. Denver is called the Mile High City because it's exactly one mile above sea level. Denver, Colorado. One other fun fact, it has more sunny days than Miami. Hard to believe, right? Florida is so sunny. Repeat after me, Hartford, Connecticut. The oldest public art museum in the U.S., Wadsworth Athenaeum, is located here. Hartford, Connecticut. One other fun fact, it's pretty close to Bridgeport, which um, used to be the hometown of P.T. Barnum, the famous circus showman. He was actually once the city's mayor. Crazy. Number eight, repeat after me. Dover, Delaware. Dover is known for the Dover International Speedway nicknamed the Monster Mile. Dover, Delaware. Repeat after me. Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee has a 24-story Capitol building, one of the tallest in the U.S. Tallahassee, Florida. Some people say Florida, as if it doesn't have an I. Other people say Florida. So take your pick. Number 10, repeat after me. Atlanta, Georgia. The Coca-Cola Company was founded in Atlanta. Its world headquarters is still located in the city. Atlanta, Georgia. Number 11. Repeat after me. Honolulu, Hawaii. Or if you're a local Hawaiian, you might say Hawaii. Honolulu is home to the only royal palace in the U.S., Iolani Palace, where Hawaii's monarchy once ruled. Honolulu, Hawaii. Repeat after me. Boise, Idaho. While Idaho is famous for its potatoes, Boise is also a hub for high-tech industries and outdoor activities. Boise, Idaho. Number 13. Repeat after me. Springfield, Illinois. While most people go to Illinois to visit Chicago, Springfield is the hometown of former President Abraham Lincoln. Springfield, 
Springfield, Illinois. His home is actually preserved, and it's a popular tourist destination. So why not visit? Number 14. Repeat after me. Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis hosts the famous Indy 500 race, the largest single-day sporting event in the world. Indianapolis, Indiana. Repeat after me. Des Moines, Iowa. Like Hartford, Des Moines is a major center for the insurance industry. Des Moines, Iowa. Number 16. Repeat after me. Topeka, Kansas. Did you know that the landmark Brown v. Board of Education case originated in Topeka? Topeka, Kansas. If you don't know what Brown v. Board of Education is, it was a Supreme Court case that declared racial segregation in public schools unconstitutional. And it was sort of the beginning of the civil rights movement in the U.S. Repeat after me. Frankfurt, Kentucky. Frankfurt is one of the smallest state capitals by population. Frankfurt, Kentucky. It's actually only about an hour away from the most populous city. Louisville, or as they say there, Louisville, um, which is home to the famous Kentucky Derby horse race. Number 18. Repeat after me. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. If you're not interested in visiting the tallest state capitol building in the U.S. in Baton Rouge, go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, Mardi Gras is one of the largest street festivals in the world. And of course, that is French for Fat Tuesday. It's essentially our carnival. Number 19, repeat after me. Augusta, Maine. Augusta, Maine is the easternmost U.S. state capital. Augusta, Maine. If you go, you have to try a lobster roll and get some blueberry pie. Number 20. Repeat after me. Annapolis, Maryland. The U.S. Naval Academy has been located in Annapolis since 1845. Annapolis, Maryland. A good way to remember that is Anna and Mary, two girls' names, Annapolis, Maryland. Some of you might have thought that Baltimore was the capital. It's not. But I did mention in a former episode that the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, was written in Baltimore during the War of 1812. And so that was in Baltimore. Number 21, repeat after me Boston, Massachusetts. Boston is home to the U.S.'s first public park, Boston Common. Boston, Massachusetts. That park was actually established in 1634. Number 22, repeat after me, Lansing, Michigan. While Detroit is known as the heart of the automotive industry, Lansing is home to several major car manufacturers, including General Motors. (laughs) 
Repeat after me. St. Paul, Minnesota. St. Paul is known for its annual winter carnival, a celebration that includes ice sculptures, parades, and winter sports. Repeat after me. Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, named after Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the U.S., hosts one of the world's largest gospel music festivals. Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson is also an important city if you're interested in the history of blues music. Repeat after me, Jefferson City, Missouri. Jefferson City was named after Thomas Jefferson, the third U.S. president. Apparently, there's another city in Missouri called Kansas City, and it has more fountains than any other city in the world except Rome. Is that true? Sounds good. Number 26. Repeat after me. Helena, Montana. By the late 19th century, Helena was one of the wealthiest cities per capita in the U.S., thanks to the area's gold production. Helena, Montana. All right, we've made it halfway through. We're now at the letter N, number 27. We have, yeah, 50 minus 27, 23 or 24 states to go. So far, what's your favorite capital city? Do you recognize some of these names? All right, let's continue. Number 27, repeat after me. Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln has a massive nature reserve. Pioneers Park, with bison, elk, and trails, reflecting the Great Plains ecosystem. Lincoln, Nebraska. Repeat after me. Carson City, Nevada. Nevada is pretty big. Carson City is almost seven hours away from Las Vegas. Carson City, Nevada. It's also right next to California. Number 29. Repeat after me. Concord, New Hampshire. Concord is known for its history of granite production. Concord, New Hampshire. Did you know that New Hampshire's nickname is the Granite State? Makes sense, right? Repeat after me. Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton is the site of a major victory during the American Revolutionary War. Trenton, New Jersey. It was actually a crucial victory for George Washington's Continental Army. Number 31. Repeat after me. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe, or Santa Fe, is famous for its vibrant arts scene. and has many galleries and festivals with Native American and Spanish influences. Santa Fe, New Mexico. My brother used to live there and loved it. Number 32. Repeat after me. Albany, New York. Albany is home to the first grand hotel in the U.S., Albany, New York. They also have New York City, 
which is home to more than 8 million people, and it's the most linguistically diverse city in the world. Repeat after me. Raleigh, North Carolina. Along with Durham and Chapel Hill, Raleigh forms part of the Research Triangle. a major center for research and education. Raleigh, North Carolina. This one can be confusing because it's spelled R-A-L-E-I-G-H. Number 34. Repeat after me. Bismarck, North Dakota. Bismarck was named after the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck to attract German investors. Bismarck, North Dakota. Repeat after me, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus is home to one of the largest universities in the U.S., Ohio State University. Columbus, Ohio. They actually have a huge football program. If I went there, i definitely try to get in on a tailgating party at a football game and then, of course, attend the game. Number 36. Repeat after me. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City is home to one of the largest livestock markets in the world. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Repeat after me, Salem, Oregon. Salem was once known as the Cherry City due to the abundance of cherry trees and its annual cherry festival. Salem, Oregon. Repeat after me. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg played a major role as a railroad hub during the Civil War. It's not too far away from Philadelphia, which is where the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Repeat after me, Providence, Rhode Island. Providence is home to the first Baptist church in the United States. Providence, Rhode Island. Number 40. Repeat after me, Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia was named after Christopher Columbus. Columbia, South Carolina. Repeat after me. Pierre, South Dakota. Pierre is one of the least populous state capitals in the U.S. South Dakota's most populous city, though, is Sioux Falls. It was named after the Sioux tribe and the waterfalls of the Big Sioux River. S-I-O-U-X is the name of the tribe. Sioux. 42. Repeat after me. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville is known as a music city for its role in the country music industry. Nashville, Tennessee. 43. Repeat after me. Austin, Texas. Austin was originally named Waterloo. Austin, Texas. And don't confuse Austin with Houston, H-O-U-S-T-O-N. 
you might recognize Houston. It was the first word spoken from the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. Repeat after me, Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City welcomed guests around the world for the Winter Olympics of 2002. Salt Lake City, Utah. Actually, the Great Salt Lake nearby is one of the largest saltwater lakes in the Western Hemisphere. The next one is the only one I wasn't sure how to pronounce. Repeat after me. Montpelier, Vermont. Montpelier, Vermont. Okay, it's actually spelled Montpelier, but people say Montpelier. Montpelier is the smallest state capital by population with just about 8,000 people. Montpelier, Vermont. It's actually pretty close to Burlington, which is where Ben and Jerry's ice cream started in 1978. Number 46, Richmond, Virginia. Richmond was the capital of the Confederacy during the Civil War. Richmond, Virginia. Virginia Beach, the most populous city, has the longest pleasure beach in the world, according to the Guinness World Records. My question is, what's a pleasure beach? Hmm. Anyway, 47. Repeat after me. Olympia, Washington. Olympia is home to the only artesian well fountain in a U.S. state capital. Olympia, Washington. You might also want to go to Seattle when you're there. It's the most populous city, and it's known for having the original Starbucks. Number 48. Repeat after me. Charleston, West Virginia. Charleston is home to one of the oldest fairs in the U.S., the West Virginia State Fair. Charleston, West Virginia. Number 49. Repeat after me. Madison, Wisconsin. Madison is close to Milwaukee, which is known for its brewing traditions. It's home to Miller Brewing Company. Repeat after me, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Cheyenne hosts the world's largest outdoor rodeo, Cheyenne Frontier Days. Cheyenne, Wyoming. It was also a major stop along the first transcontinental railroad. Now that's it for the fun facts. How many of these state capitals have you been to? It's funny because so many of the capitals are not the major cities that we typically travel to on vacation. I just counted and I've only been to six of the 50 mentioned. Can you guess the state I travel to if I tell you the capital? Let's see how much you remember. Austin. Austin is the capital of which state? Texas. Good. Austin, Texas. So Lucas and I spent the summer of 2016 there, right on South Congress. And so if you walked out of our apartment and onto the street, you could actually see the Capitol building. I highly recommend visiting Austin. It's a very fun place. Go to River Street. Go to Sixth Street. It's just a lot of fun. Denver. Denver is the capital of which state? 
Colorado. Lucas and I had two honeymoons after we got married. We decided to do two shorter trips rather than one really long one. And so we actually spent one in Colorado, in Denver and Boulder and the Rocky Mountains, and the other in Bahia in Brazil. So two very different places. Denver, they had a lot of good food there. Next, we have Montpelier. We just went over this. Montpelier is the capital of which state? Vermont. Last year, we took a trip to see the changing of leaves in Vermont and to try their maple syrup. And we stopped in Montpelier while taking a road trip to Burlington. And no offense to the 8,000 people there, but there's not much going on. We just decided to head to Burlington. So I've been to Austin, Denver, Montpelier, Boston. Boston is the capital of which state? Do you know? Massachusetts. So Boston is 100% worth visiting if you haven't been there. It's so historical. I feel like everything is the first. Like you'll go to the MLB Stadium Fenway Park. It was the first baseball stadium in the U.S. It's the first restaurant. It's the first this and that. I, I just, everything was the first. Plus, the Boston Tea Party took place there, which is just an epic part of U.S. history. I love Boston. Anyway, moving on to the next one, Honolulu. Honolulu is the capital of which state? Hawaii. You probably know this, but Hawaii is made up of multiple islands, and Honolulu is on Oahu. So if you plan on traveling to Waikiki, the plane will land in Honolulu. Last but not least, Sacramento. Sacramento is the capital of which state? California. (laughs) Not many tourists I know who come from outside of the U.S. stop in Sacramento, but it's so cute. I grew up right next to Sacramento and San Francisco, actually smack dab in the middle of them. So we'd usually take trips up to Old Sac. Maybe on your trip up to Tahoe, you can stop in Sacramento. They have a big farm-to-table restaurant scene, which is pretty nice. Visiting Old Sac, sort of this old western part of town, is also fun. It's just nice. That's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if I made some mistake, please let me know. You can find me on Instagram at American English Podcast. And if you're interested in signing up to premium content, once again, visit the website at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com or just check the episode notes. I always post the most important links there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.